All right, it's been a tough week for AEW. I'm not going to get too in the weeds here on bashing them, but I'd be remiss if I did not bash them a little bit. So I guess today, call me Doug and Danny bashing. I'm bashing AEW with the rest of them. Tony Khan feared for his life over that? Come on, Tony. Do you also fear for your life when your Siri goes off on accident? Or do you fear for your life when your microwave freaking beeps? I find it funny, you know, Will Ospreay mentioned in his interview that Triple H only has his job because he's sleeping with the boss's daughter, which is ironic because Will Ospreay's boss arguably only has his job because his daddy gave him a high enough allowance to have it. But I will say this though, all bashing aside, let me put on my neutral cap here, because after all, I am a journalist. If you couldn't tell by the tie, I have to be neutral and cover both sides equally. If the goal of this promo, which I highly doubt, was to get Jack Perry over, then mission accomplished. Did you hear that crowd in Chicago for New Japan? He was over like Rover, like Rover in a Rover with a Dober red and sober. Who knew that getting your ass beat on camera would get you so over? If only Daniel Pewter made his tough enough debut in 2024, am I right? Now everyone is wondering what The Rock handed Cody Rhodes on Monday Night Raw, but I have the solution and I'm here to share it with you right now. I'm from the south side of Chicago, okay? I've seen this move many a times. I know a drug deal when I see one, all right? Cody mentioned on SmackDown it was some kind of old war relic of the past that he had once given Rock. I don't know. All I know is The Rock said he's out for Hollywood for a little while, and that is key to getting heat in this era of 2024. You gotta be part-time. Rock's been on TV too much. The crowd's gonna cheer him. You gotta go away for a little while. If we've seen, if we've learned anything over the years, it's that part-timers get the heat, baby. Unless you're Bill Goldberg, for some reason whenever he comes back, the crowd absolutely loses their mind, which is not a shot at Bill Goldberg, but it's also not an endorsement either. By all means, Bill Goldberg, enjoy your retirement. Stay home. We're good. Solo Sokoa appears to have formed the Bloodline Wolfpack with the help of his cousin Toma Tonga, destroying his brother Jimmy Uso on SmackDown. And yes, if WWE television has taught us anything over the years, it's that when you take that spot of the chair wrapped around your neck and it connects, you're off TV for at least a few weeks. Everybody knows that. But Jimmy Uso whoopings aside, what I want to know is how Paul Heyman's phone was able to survive those vicious stomps from Solo when, if my phone slips out of my pocket on accident, the screen looks like it was used as a spot in a Jack Perry match. Okay, that was the last one. That was the last one. But the way Solo made Paul Heyman throw his one up in the air, are we heading where I think we're heading? Come on, you, you know what I'm thinking, right? You've watched the show long enough, you know what I'm thinking. That's right, SummerSlam, Solo Sokoa, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman custody on a pole match. Let's go. For your main event minute, this is Joe Matanga signing off. Until next time, guys, take care.